In this case report, we describe the novel use of a percutaneous left ventricular assist device in a pediatric patient as a bridge to transplantation. The patient was a 13-year-old female who had developed progressive cough, shortness of breath, and pleuritic chest pain for two weeks. She was evaluated in an outside hospital where she underwent an echocardiogram that showed severely depressed left ventricular function. She was hypotensive and IV inotropic support was initiated. She was transferred to our institution for further evaluation and management. Her medical history is significant for asthma, morbid obesity. On examination, we observed a well-developed adolescent with a body mass index of 42. She was tachypnic and required 35% inhaled oxygen to maintain appropriate saturation. Blood work was significant for a white blood cell count of 20. Her chest x-ray showed cardiomegaly and pulmonary congestion. We performed another echo, which revealed a left ventricular ejection fraction of 21% and diffuse dilated cardiomyopathy. Despite optimal medical therapy, she continued to decompensate and would become hemodynamically unstable with minimal activity. A myocardial MRI was obtained, which demonstrated persistent myocardial inflammation and severely impaired left ventricular contractility. The right heart catheterization was consistent with marginal but adequate right heart function. Treatment options were considered by a multidisciplinary heart team. Due to her high body mass index, she was determined to be a poor candidate for immediate heart transplantation. We were encouraged by her MRI findings of active inflammation, which suggested the possibility for improved function over time. We recognized the importance of maintaining sustained physical activity as part of an aggressive weight loss regimen to improve her candidacy for transplant, should this be required. Given these considerations, we proceeded with implantation of a transaxillary Impella 5.0 left ventricular assist device, as this would accomplish effective left ventricular unloading, avoid a sternotomy, and permit for a relatively high level of physical activity. She was taken to the operating room and sedated under general anesthesia. The right axillary artery was exposed, and an 8 millimeter Dacron graft was anastomosed. The device was advanced over a wire into the left ventricle under fluoroscopic and transesophageal echo guidance. The procedure was well tolerated, and she was transferred to the intensive care unit with the device functioning well and generating a predicted flow rate of 4 to 5 liters per minute. She was extubated later that day. Her symptoms steadily improved, and she was soon weaned off of IV inotropes. She began ambulating on post-operative day number two. She continued to progress well. While still hospitalized and with the device in place, she described her experience. I had to have the impel place that I got a virus that attacked my heart and it was called myocarditis. So we decided to do this and it, it just all it does is pump my blood into my out of my heart and helps it like so it will rest well because it's doing all the work and then my heart will rest and then hopefully get better every time that the virus can rest at four I was at nine injection nine fraction. injection fraction and now I'm at twenty two injection fraction and they want me to get to thirty or to over the following weeks she continued to improve. She participated in schoolwork and a structured fitness program. She had excellent ambulatory capacity as shown in this video. Serial echo imaging demonstrated progressive improvement in ventricular function. On post-implant day number 51, she developed hematuria. There was concern for device-related hemolysis, and the LVAD was removed uneventfully. After explantation, echo revealed a 38% left ventricular ejection fraction. IV inotropes were rapidly weaned, and she was optimized on oral medication. During the course of her hospitalization, she achieved a 28-pound weight loss. She was discharged to home nine days following device removal. She initially did quite well and continued to lose weight. Several months later, she began developing recurrent heart failure exacerbations and was ultimately listed for cardiac transplantation, which she received. This case represents a successful application of a transaxillary 5.0 as a bridge to transplant in a pediatric patient with viral myocarditis. We acknowledge several disadvantages associated with this treatment modality. These include the potential for hemolysis and aortic valve injury. Graft complications are possible, including vascular stenosis, embolization, and intimal hyperplasia. To present time, established weaning protocols have not been developed, and there's a paucity of data related to extended use of the device. There are many advantages of this treatment. Transaxillary placement not only avoids a sternotomy, but is minimally intrusive and allows for excellent mobility and activity, as demonstrated in this presentation.
The device provides effective ventricular unloading to promote recovery, and anticoagulation requirements are minimal. The external controller is easily assessed and monitored. Additionally, implantation of the impella has minimal impact on options for additional procedures such as transplant or durable device implantation. Our institutional algorithm for the management of heart failure due to viral myocarditis is as follows. If this diagnosis is suspected, a comprehensive medical workup is performed to confirm it. If the patient is inotrope responsive, they are transitioned to oral medication. If this is tolerated, they can be discharged and monitored. If they cannot be transitioned or do not respond to IV inotropes, they undergo myocardial MRI. If this does not demonstrate active inflammation, they are evaluated for cardiac transplantation as they'll be unlikely to improve. If the MRI demonstrates active inflammation, they are considered for ventricular assist device placement with transplant reserved for failure of recovery. In conclusion, for select patients with viral myocarditis associated severe heart failure, Transaxillary impella 5.0 left ventricular assist should be considered as a therapeutic option as it is well tolerated and provides effective left ventricular unloading to promote myocardial recovery.